So your TBS Tango 2 screen is broken and buying a new one is going to set you back around 300 US dollars. That's if it's in stock and it might cost you a little bit more plus taxes plus shipping. Now you're wondering if you should attempt to replace the screen yourself, but you're new to FPV and you're nervous about opening up the radio and attempting to fix it. Well, guess what? In today's video, I'm gonna put you at ease as it's actually super straightforward. <laughs> So before we start taking apart the radio, make sure you order your replacement screen. Now I ordered mine direct from Team Black Sheep. It's actually pretty inexpensive. I think it was like $10. I actually paid 50 for shipping. I think it was 50 for shipping. Yeah, whatever. It was, so I paid, let's say 60 bucks in total to get this pretty much within a few days. I'd rather that so I could be flying quicker personally. But if you're on a budget, just pay for, for the cheap shipping and then you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer. You also wanna make sure you have a hex tool kit. So this is one of four that I have. You're gonna need the 1.5 millimeter. I would also pick up one of these, what are these called Ian? It would also be useful to pick up one of these precision tool kits. I think I've got mine from Canadian Tire, but if you're in the US or wherever in the world, I'm sure one of these like dollar stores or pound stores or even Amazon, just go to Amazon and type in precision tool kit and you'll find something similar like this. Whereas if I open it up, it has a bunch of tools in. Obviously I have a toothpick because that can be useful. Uh, it has like screwdrivers and other different tools, pliers, lip things to pry open precision items. So this is pretty useful toolkit. Okay, let's begin with taking apart the Tango 2. I'm gonna switch to the lower unit so and then have the camera top down and then you guys will watch as I open it. So first you wanna take off this lanyard holder. So I'm just gonna take this off. And this is a 2.5 millimeter hex screw. I'm just gonna put this to one side. The next step is you wanna take off these hand grips. So obviously I've already removed one and it's pretty straightforward, but you do have to use a little bit of force. I would start with the edges here and you just have to push and then pry open. Obviously I haven't put this one back, but be gentle, like firm, but gentle. You don't wanna ruin the clips. The last, the last thing you wanna do. As you can see, it can be a little bit fidgety. There you go. There you go. So this is the, the hand grips. This is what I mean by the hook in the middle here. As you can see it. So these are your two hand grips. We're gonna put these to one side with the screws. So if we face it this way, so it's easier for you guys. This one, this one, and this one on this side. And again, you have another screw here and here. Uh, the ones in the middle aren't actually screws, so we don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart. And make sure you put these in a safe place. Okay, now we can gently pull this apart and the back cover comes off and we can set this to one side now. Okay, you wanna disconnect uh, the battery. So obviously when I disconnected it, when I was taking it apart, uh, I already pulled this out, but the battery would be linked here. So you wanna disconnect that. And then you wanna remove the battery. So this is where the battery would be. And I'm gonna put this to one side as well. Okay, you also want to remove this here. This is for the speaker, I believe, so that would go here. And then you have this cable that was attached. This cable was attached here. So if I just pull this back gently, you can see where that is. So you wanna make sure you pull this off gently. And you could, that's why I say a precision toolkit becomes handy, because then you can have a set of tweezers where you can just gently pull them off. Okay, the next thing after you remove those, is you wanna remove four screws. So again, using the 1.5 millimeter. Okay, so now you wanna remove uh, these two bottom screws and these two top screws. These ones we won't need to do as they are tied in with the gimbals. So let's remove these. Again, you wanna put them to one side so you don't lose them. Now, when you are taking apart, you want to make sure that this aerial is actually tied in here. Uh, I will show you a screenshot. You wanna gently take this out uh, and then remove the aerial which sits here. So the aerial actually sits on this little clip 
and this is what you need to make sure you pull off carefully. Again, you can use tweezers, just be gentle. And as you can see, this is the PCB board and, and this is the version two. You can see the version number located here on the side. So now we don't really need this. We can set this to one side. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, we, so the screen would be underneath here. So when you are pulling it, I believe the screen was situated something like, like this, because it came through the hole and then it was fed in through like this. So you have to pull it gently. Don't pull this black thing off. That's not what you want to do. And so first thing I want to do is take off the aerial. So again, 1.5 millimeter, just unscrew these and this should remove. So we've taken the aerial off now. And the next thing we wanna do is take off this board here with these four screws. And then I would say gently pu pull this off. There we go. And then we wanna make sure this is the power button. Just put this to one side. And that we now have to attach the screen. This is for the screen here. So I'm just gonna leave this to here for now. And this was the, uh, the culprit. So when, if you end up going traveling and for some reason mine broke, this was actually in my rucksack. And when I went to set the drone up, uh, this was the, um, the end result, which I wasn't too happy about. So I think I need to do better job packing next time or being extra careful or getting the screen protector. That's something that maybe I should buy. But yeah, let's check out the new screen. Some cool stickers here. We can make use of this. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to one side. This is, I like how it's all bubble wrap this. This is pretty cool. So this is the TBS Tango 2 replacement OLED screen. That's true, don't follow them, go out and fly. That's something that we're gonna test once we've set this up. So let's try it. Look at that, brand new screen, not broken. Okay, let's put this back together. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is make sure the cable's at the top because it's gonna be folded back, that's how it came. But before we do that, I want to put this here. So you can see this little flap. So this cable's gonna come through and it's going to sit in here, as you can see, and then I'm gonna clip it down. And that is in now. And then I wanna put the screen facing down. And then we can start putting things back together. Now I wanna make sure the power button is in. So people can see that is the new screen. That is that part down. Now we want to put this back. So I think I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see better. It's super finicky, but you have to be careful. There you go. And that is in. So everyone can see that's how it's supposed to be. And the cable runs through and then it'll back down on to here like this. And we want to make sure this ribbon cable is not stuck in the worst place. There you go. It's not hard, it's just because I'm trying to film at the same time. And I'm trying to make sure you guys get a good view of what I'm trying to do to make your lives easier. Now before I attach anything else, I want to put these screws back in. So we can see these still work, everything still functioning. Buttons, power button. So now we want to connect the speaker back. So the speaker's back connected. We want to connect this, which looks very tricky, but you just gotta be gentle. There you go, you'll hear a click, just push down on the sticky pad. That was straightforward. We can see this still functions. 
and then we put the put the battery back it's merely just lining up the pad here and just pushing down firmly you hear a click we can put the power back in there you go and then we can put this back on top and we want to use the six screws from before to put those in and then the last part is to put these rubber grommets back and that is the Tango 2 put back together and let's try turning it on And there we go, we are fixed. Okay, so now that the TBS Tango 2 is fixed, as you can see, screen, I can see everything. None of my settings have changed so far as I know. Uh, it still says my quad name. What I'm gonna do is we are gonna do a quick flight just to make sure everything's fine. Um, but first I need to just update my settings because I'm now in Canada, not in Europe, and the frequency needs to change. But anyway, I'm gonna sort all that out. I'm going to charge the batteries, we're going to do a quick flight and then we'll uh, end the video. So as you can see, we're outside. I have the Gepard C Cinelog 25 with the Action 2. The TBS Crossfire with the fixed screen. And we're now going to do a quick flight under the Betway. Okay, so I tried filming this outro outside, but that day happened to be super windy. So you wouldn't have been able to hear me. So enjoy the rest of the FPV footage. And if you found this video useful, remember to give it a like. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. And hopefully I've saved you buying a new TBS Tango 2 Pro. And it's really simple and straightforward to just change the screen. And hopefully we can change components in the future as we learn FPV together. This video was aimed at new beginners basically. So I have the Cinelog 25, I do have plans to get a new sub 250 FPV drone and a couple of others, but we'll see how finances go. Subscribe for more drones, photography and everything in between. And at the end of the video, YouTube recommends you should watch that next. Have a good one. Peace.